Hey guys, even here, and in today's video we get some really really interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting as you can see with Rubiel Mosquera aka Nexilla who just posted a crazy freaking physique update over there in Kuwait in the auction gyms that's right that's where he is he's prepping for Dubai Pro from there and I'm telling you this guy was not wasting time even though it kind of seemed like he was you know having too much fun resting too much but no no it looks like he is gonna be a lot better this year than he was last year and i think it's pretty safe to say we're gonna see him on the mr olympia stage now as far as dubai pro which happens to be like one of the best one of the biggest bodybuilding shows in the world prize money wise at least which open bodybuilder can potentially defeat this guy Andrew Jack was supposed to do it, but he decided to pull out, so... I mean, Rubiel is definitely the heavy, heavy favorite to win this show, and I'm telling you already, he's gonna win it. And he's gonna go to the Mr. Olympia stage, and what he's gonna do at the Mr. Olympia... I mean, that's a, that's a big question, a very, very interesting question. I'm sure after the Dubai Pro, I'm gonna make a separate video about that. Just trying to figure out where Rubiel Mosquera might place at the Mr. Olympia. It would also be very interesting to make a video about where Rubiel would place if he did a New York Pro this year. Because, I don't know, would he be second to Nick Walker? Would he defeat Martin Fitzwater? Would he beat Nick Walker himself? I don't know, I'm not sure, but it would definitely be very interesting to see that. Anyways, look at Rubiel right here. I mean, look at the freaking density, the thickness, and now also, like, his skin is starting to look thin, you know, finally. He's starting to look, like, grainy. You know, a couple of years ago, when he was competing in the IBB Elite Pro, his skin always kinda looked a little bit thick. You know, it looked like it can't be changed, and he's never gonna get in that condition, but at Prague Pro, he surprised. He actually brought a really good level of conditioning in detail. And now it kinda seems like he's getting one step further. And there is still a lot of time left before the Dubai Pro. So his conditioning is gonna improve, but it's very interesting to see him looking like this right now, in this point in prep. And also, like, the fullness and the size is insane, it's crazy. Now, we all know his weak points. He's definitely not the prettiest bodybuilder of them all. Like, he's definitely not the most aesthetic guy. And not that he has a big waist or a big uh, midsection, like, bubble gut or anything like that. He does not. His midsection is fine. It's great. What the problem is, is probably a little bit too big of a neck and traps. And I guess also the size of the legs is a little bit just too freaky, too much. But this is open bodybuilding we're talking about. It's open bodybuilding for a reason. It's because the size has no limits. You know, these guys can be as big as possible. I mean, if some body parts are bigger than the others, it's gonna make other body parts look smaller in proportion. So it's definitely great to have dominant body parts. It's gonna make your physique look even more freaky, but, you know, to a certain point, you know. And in his case, his legs are a bit too big and, you know, the thing with the neck, I mean, his nickname is Nexilla, so, I mean, a huge neck is definitely not a good thing, it's attractive, it's great for social media, but for a bodybuilding stage, not a great thing, but we all know that, we all know what his weaknesses, quote-unquote, are, I mean, his weaknesses are actually his strong points, <laughs> literally, so let's say he brings up some of the other body parts, and, like, his legs stay the same, and I don't know, I don't think he's gonna <laughs> make his neck any smaller, but, you know, with the neck as it is, I think he still is one of the most impressive bodybuilders in the world today. And I don't think he's gonna be overlooked. So once again, I'm pretty sure with this insane physique, look at the freaking arm right here. His arms in side shots are crazy, crazy, man. This fullness, this size, wow. And the chest from the side as well. I mean, he's freaky everywhere. Everything is super crazy. So again, with this freak factor and with new conditioning that I think he's gonna bring this year, he cannot be ignored. He's winning Dubai Pro, he's going to the Mr. Olympia, and you guys tell me, what do you think, where can he place in the Mr. Olympia? Top 6, is it possible? I think top 10 for sure, but is top 6, top 5 possible? Or higher? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, next up, we got a physique update from Urs Kalecinski, posing with Brand Warren. And Urs goes around the world, he trains with all the big name guys and a lot of open bodybuilders, of course, because all the legends of bodybuilding are from the open. Classic is a new category. But this just makes me think, if he's surrounded with so many open bodybuilders, I mean, he's kind of mentored by Marcus Rule, he is hanging with all these open bodybuilders like Jay Cutler, like Fuad Abiyad, like Branch Warren here, 
it makes me wonder is he considering you know switching and like moving to the open because i don't know i mean i don't know if he can do very well but he can definitely he can definitely try i mean he can definitely grow i think he can definitely grow that much muscle i think he has the genetics to get big to get seriously big because look at him right now right here in this off season i mean he's already massive and super lean and this is him trying to stay small i mean small for classic physique because if this guy tried to force feed like to to grow to push the off season i think he would blow up in one year and here he is next to andrew jack martin fitzwater derek lansford nick walker and samson dauda and i'm telling you he is not really that far behind especially compared to martin fitzwater who just almost beat nick walker by the way so if he tried really really truly tried for let's say a couple of years to push for that mass i think he would do well and i think i think that would be the right call for us because can i see him ever defeating wesley wizards if wesley wizards comes in shape again can i see him ever beating ramon dino can i ever see him beating chris bumstead no no i definitely cannot unless all of these guys are super off because he like his frame is very limited for classic physique what we saw so far is the best we're ever gonna see from Urs. He looks much, much more impressive in the offseason compared to his classic sucked down version. So I think open bodybuilding would be the right call for him. I mean, I don't know how much he likes open bodybuilding, but I think if I had the opportunity to go to open bodybuilding, to actually grow that fast as well, it's not like it would take him 10 years. I think a couple of years would be enough. If I had this opportunity, I wouldn't think about it twice. Open bodybuilding is open bodybuilding, I mean, that's the history of the sport, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, that's Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, all these guys are open bodybuilders. If he can somehow get to the top 10 of the Mr. Olympia, I think that would be a bigger success even than winning the Classic Physique Mr. Olympia title, in my opinion at least. And I don't think he's ever gonna win the Classic Physique Mr. Olympia, so top 3 in Classic or like top 10, which I think is reasonable for Urs in Open again i wouldn't think twice whatever you guys think tell me down below we also have a physique update of ramon dino and uh, he is 100 over 120 kilos which is about 265 which is very heavy for him and the question this page made is how will he even make the weight and wesley research actually replied in the comment he says he will make the weight i just think it's awesome to see most guys gain weight to show quality improvements on the big stage the Olympia is going to be very exciting this year. And, you know, the thing is, these guys, they already reached the maximum potential in their classic physique journey. So I don't think they need to gain any more, weight, any more weight because eventually they're going to have to cut down to the original weight they were before. So in case of Ramon Dino, you know, at the Arnold Classic, he was definitely not his biggest self. So in his case, it is good that he got back this weight because at the Mr. Olympia, he's gonna make the weight, I don't have doubts about that. And then he's gonna try to bounce back up, fill out, and he's gonna look much bigger on that stage. So maybe, maybe this time around he even beats Wesley Wissers, which I don't think is gonna happen unless Wesley is off. If Wesley is on, it's not happening. Now as far as Ramon Dino, we also saw him at the Pittsburgh Pro Guest posing and he also looked surprisingly big. And he is also another guy who can successfully switch to the open bodybuilding. But I also think he is in a much better situation than Urs Kalicinski because he was already top two at the Mr. Olympia. And he was in the special callout, separate callout with Sebum. So he's like the next guy in line uh, right now. Yeah, he lost the Arnold Classic to Wesley Wissers, but that wasn't his best. We'll see if he's gonna remain number two at the Mr. Olympia, but Chris Bumstead is gonna retire eventually. And right now it seems like it's Ramon Dino or Wesley Wissers who are gonna be the next Classic Physic Mr. Olympia champion. So in his case, yeah, I believe it's the best to stick with Classic, but Urs, who probably looked his best ever at the Arnold UK, still lost to Brian Ainsley. So in his case, I don't have high hopes, but Ramon Dino, he can definitely be in the top two again, can he surpass Chris Bumstead? I don't think so. I think he can only beat him if Chris is off. And would Chris Bumstead even compete if he wasn't on? I doubt that. So yeah, I think Ramon Dino is probably gonna be, you know, top two, top three for as long as Chris is competing. 
All right, next up, we got a very interesting post from Quinton Araya. And notice I'm not saying an update because this is not an update. Believe it or not, this is an old photo. Two years freaking old photo from when he was prepping for Tampa Pro. And uh, I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure that here he looks much better than he did this year. And here he was 270 at two weeks out of Tampa Pro. So, I said it before and I'm gonna say it again, he looked better in 2022 when he was working with Dorian Haywood than he did this year, working with Matt Jensen. And what went wrong, we all talked about it and he kind of answered it, he over dieted this year. And the plan right now for him is not to do the California Pro, he's not on the list, he's gonna be doing Toronto Pro against guys like Andrea Presti and Hassan Mustafa and Akim Williams. Uh, do I see him winning that show? Yeah, not likely, not likely. I definitely do have a Kim Williams winning that show. If he is in his condition that he brought to the Arnold Classic stage. And I would say also probably under a Presti next. And then if Hassan is completely off, which is usually the case, I mean, Quinton can be third. But we'll see. The plan for him is to be 280 at Toronto Pro with this kind of, this, with, this, with a similar look to this. With this kind of fullness. Now the question is, can he really bring back up this fullness after over dieting so badly? I don't know. I don't think here he's just full. I think he just has more muscle. I think he dieted off the actual tissue this year. And it usually takes an off season to bring back the lost tissue. Can he do it in a couple of weeks? I doubt it. But we'll see. I asked Quinton in the comment section how much weight would he have to lose to make the weight for classic physique and he said 30 pounds and also he said that he tried a couple of years back and he looked too stringy so he doesn't want to do it but take a look at uh, Stefan Mattal right here this is his most recent physique update when he started this prep for classic physique he was 45 pounds over the weight cap and he was also in a very decent conditioning so now when he lost 30 pounds and he looks like this, and this is very, very lean. Yeah, I know Patrick is editing his photos heavily, but still, still, this is a very good condition. He has to lose 14 more pounds to make the classic physique weight limit. And I don't know what his physique is going to look like then. Is he going to lose all this roundness, bubbliness, whatever, or he's going to get even more grainy with the same kind of look, same roundness? We'll see, but I hope it's gonna be the latter, and I said this about many bodybuilders at this point, that they can make a top 5 or top 6 in the Mr. Olympian Classic Physique, and Stefan is definitely one of them, one of my favorites. Is he gonna be able to do it? I mean, I don't know, but he's definitely going to the Mr. Olympia stage, I have no doubts about that. Whatever you guys think about this amazing physique or whatever part of this video, tell us down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.